Guys, I've, I've just moved from one state in Australia to another state. So I've moved from Victoria to New South Wales. Right now I'm in a place called Stockton and right here they are building an offshore wind farm. Well, about to. Well, they want to. But massive protests are going on. People are complaining about offshore wind. Even though these wind farms are more than 30 kilometers offshore and you can't see them unless you've got really powerful binoculars, people are saying that they'll be an eyesore, that they're terrible for the environment. Well, fortunately, most people aren't listening to these people who have been brainwashed by, I don't know, fossil fuels, by coal power. They believe coal power is what they need here in Australia. However, the Australian grid is changing at a staggering pace in spite of many thousands of people like this in Australia who are very anti-renewable energy. Like I said, though, solar and wind are absolutely smashing it. New goals have been achieved, which is staggering this year. Renewables have hit 70% of the entire Australian grid, breaking a new record. 70%. Just imagine where we'll be in five years' time. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Wind and solar just hit 70% of Australia's main grid. Now, this is not permanent. This is not like they're averaging 70% every day. This is a new record. So they hit that point at a certain time of day. Of course, there was a lot of sun on that day. But to be honest, it's always sunny in Australia. Well, nearly always sunny. It's a very, very sunny country. Fortunately, most of the world, in fact, does live on the sun belt, which is why it makes so much sense to, well, to use solar rather than burning coal. Wind and solar power reached an instantaneous peak of nearly 70% of generation for the entire grid in Australia. That's a new record, and it sends fossil fuel generation to a new low. And it means, if any of you have heard of Tony Sieber before, I know some of you know who Tony Sieber is, but there's also Tony Sieber, there's also some really good presentations from Singularity University. And if you listen to both of these guys, you can see the problem with coal generation in particular is that if a coal power plant runs at less than 70% of generation capacity, if it's running at less than 70%, it is financially unprofitable, as in it's making a loss. This is the case for almost all coal power plants worldwide. Now, what happens when your solar panels are running at less than 70% efficiency? Nothing. I mean, you don't need all these people running around. You don't need these furnaces burning. You, nothing. Nothing changes, right? You, they're still profitable. If you run at 65%, no big deal. I mean, it's nicer to run at 80, but it's actually not a big deal. So at the same time that we now know many of these coal plants are making a loss, their losses are actually growing because as the renewable energy on the grid increases, it means the output from these coal power plants decreases and their losses continue to grow higher and higher and higher to the point where there's going to be a completely financially, economically unsustainable within a couple of years. And this is going to actually accelerate the possibly prices could increase in the short term for renewables and for just energy on the grid in general. Of course, unless you've got your own solar, that is. But in the long term, this will save us billions, if not actually trillion, according to Oxford University, it's going to save the world around $10 trillion based on our current trajectory of speeding up renewable energy deployment. The share of renewables in the national electricity market hit a new record here in Australia of 71.55% on Monday, and that beats the previous record of 70.83%. So we're at nearly 72%. The share of wind and solar alone was almost all of that. It was 70%. That's according to GPE NEM Lodge 2 based on a five minute trading interval. And that beat a previous record of 69.6%. Basically, of renewables here in Australia, almost all of it is wind and solar. However, if we compare this to the best numbers we have from last year, well, the best number we had was 65.8%. But if we compare this to Five years ago, that's where we see the true differences here in the disruption that's happened. Five years ago, the record was 18.6%. So within five years, we've gone from 18.6% of the grid in Australia running on renewables as a record, that's just for five minutes, to 71.5%. You can clearly see that 
Within the next five years, the Australian grid will hit 100% on numerous times of the day. The question is, how long for? The question is, when will this happen? Well, I would predict that it will happen in 2025. In other words, probably in less than two years from today. Will we be hitting 100% all the time? No, of course not. We will need some backup from fossil fuels for another couple of years, but it's likely the Australian grid will hit around 95% renewables by approximately 2028. And that's on average over the course of the day and the night. And keep in mind, one of the key reasons for this is because right now we have solar, which is awesome, but we have too much solar. We often go around turning solar off during the day. This happens to people right now, today. In fact, it's very common. Instead of turning off the solar, these new massive batteries that are being built all around Australia will soak up that excess solar energy. Then we can use that in the nighttime. The combined output of variable renewable energy, which is wind and solar, smashed the previous record setting a new peak according to reneweconomy.com.au of 19,811 megawatts, up from 19,583 megawatts in February this year. Now, what is really incredible about this is we're not even in summer yet. Guys, this is this is not summer here in Australia. So hitting this record at this in this month of the year is amazing. At the same time, coal has been sent down to a record low share of the main grid in Australia. As renewables grow, fossil fuel output obviously has to come down. It just makes mathematical sense, obviously. The share of coal hit a new low of 27.9% at the same time that renewables hit their peak. So 27.9%. The share of coal and gas hit a new low of 28.6%. You can see gas makes up only a very small fraction of our energy market here now. In Australia. What's really great about this is that coal is just, it's terrible for everyone. I know there's a lot of people who are very angry about this because they work in the coal industry. Um, they believe that if Australia loses our coal industry, that um, our economy will die. But keep this in mind, right? EV sales are growing constantly. The percentage of Australians buying EVs is growing. And even if you don't like that, even if you hate electric cars, it doesn't matter because that's happening. You can't do anything to stop that, no matter how much nonsense you post and how many lies you make up about EVs not being able to drive in tunnels and all kinds of things that I've heard recently. The truth is EV sales are growing rapidly. What do EVs use? They use energy. Most of the energy now is coming from Australia, well, almost all of it. Renewable energy, right? It's coming from the sun here that we generate that energy in Australia. We don't need to buy it from elsewhere and import it, which is what we have to do for fuel. Most of Australia's fuel, as in our petrol, gasoline, diesel, comes from overseas. So now we can run our vehicles on the energy we create here. It's a net win. Even though we might lose some of our coal generation or a fair bit of it, we gain that back. So if you're wondering what the biggest generator of energy or what the source of the biggest generation of energy is in Australia, it is the sun. Solar makes up a very large percentage now of energy. In fact, it hit 36% share. So you can see the share of solar at well, many times of the day now is significantly higher than the share of coal across Australia's entire market. Now, there are parts of Australia where these numbers are, they look terrible because we've got places like Adelaide, South Australia, big state that has run purely on renewable energy now um, for several days, days and days and days. So we've got areas of Australia where we do run only on renewables, but places unfortunately like Queensland, and New South Wales, here where I am, they're still fairly behind. And a lot of that is due to the mindset of a lot of people who are trying to block renewable energy from being deployed. But it doesn't really matter what they do because ultimately economics matter. Governments don't want to spend money on things that don't make economic sense. So ultimately, here's the big takeaway. Renewable energy has hit a new high here in Australia. Coal has fallen to a new low records keep getting broken. And as a result, these coal power stations are just too expensive to run. A lot of them will be shut down much sooner than was previously anticipated as a result. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Bye-bye.